Alright, so for this tutorial, we're going to be completing our layout in Maya. Now I'm going to swap back over to Synthize, and we're going to export our stuff one more time, just so you can see. But for now, you can see the shot that we're going to be working with on this one. It is a very clean free move again. You can see the perspective is nice and average. Uh, the architecture is very crooked. It's an old structure, so everything's warped. Uh, so not too bad, but we got things scaled. Uh, you can see the shed over here. We got some points on the outside. Okay, so let's start exporting stuff. The first thing you want to do is make sure you have your distortion applied. You can come over to Lens Workflow and turn on Redistorted 2, hit OK, and nice. Uh, um, I didn't know how to end that, but whatever. So once this is applied, now you can export your, your camera. And you can have ASCII, Filmbox FBX, Alembic, or whatever software you are working in. For this one, I'm going to be working with my ASCII and I'm just gonna overwrite this file that's already there. And the only setting that I'm gonna adjust here is rotation order. This is due to gimbal lock stuff if you get into some very complex hand animation of your camera. Hit OK. So we've exported our camera. Now we want to write out this undistorted plate so that we can use it in Blender, Maya, Houdini, or Nuke or whatever. We're gonna come over to save sequence and here all you're gonna do is jump over to the three dots, navigate to wherever your plate is. Once you find your folder, I like to select the format that my plate is because if I do that, I can steal the first frame's name and then I can add in underscore UD for undistort and I can change the last, uh, I can change the file type to JPEG and then I can just, see I already written it out. Uh, then I can, yeah, I, can, I stole its name, made it a JPEG, put undistortion and you can hit start and it will go. All right, now we've exported the plate. Now we need our ST map. So our ST map is so that compositing uh, compositor artists can apply the distortion to the CG and comp it into the, you know, into the shot. But something I want to mention real quick: if you happen to have half resed your plate in any way, make sure that you are working with the pro with the full project uh, working resolution. So if I hit P for image prep, sometimes some people go to the res tab here, come to down res, just uh, down resing helps with heavy, heavy scenes, but make sure that that is set to none, but you also have your full res plate. Otherwise, you're going to have some very angry compositing artists. I'm going to come over to shot, write distortion maps. If you happen to have a zooming lens with animated distortion, you can do distortion sequence, but we're going to stick with distortion maps for now. And you can see that I've already written out the files, so what you would name it, in our case, would be seud.exr. If you wanted, you can also put your shot name in there if you want to be organized, but at TrackVFX, we just give it this label. So save. And that is all the exports that we needed out of Synthize. So I can collapse this, come over to Maya. And the nice part about Synthize is that it enters in the file path into your clipboard. So I can import this very easily, but first I just want to say that at TrackVFX we have Shotgun Desktop and that means that our Maya typically loads, we're already loaded into our shot and resolution and all that stuff is already set. So I would hit, I would hit Control I for import or, you know, come over to import. But in this case, just for my own, uh, just for my own uh, situation here, I'm going to hit Control O for open. And over here, I can come over to File Name, Control V to Paste, and Open. Now I am inside the shot. So I'm going to do this cleanup very quickly. This Maya tutorial is not for people who don't know Maya. This is assuming you know Maya. And um, yeah, if you're lost, I'm sorry. But this is just, this was mainly me teaching Synthize, and here's the Maya side of our camera track. But I'm going to do. Uh, just my style of how I clean up my scene initially. And yeah, let's see how this goes. First things first, I like to split my view and I turn on aliasing immediately. And then I swap my left side to perspective. I held space, clicked in the middle, perspective. And I'm gonna select my plate, control A, so I can get my attribute editor. I'm gonna go to the file path here for my sequence and I'm gonna type in, uh, I'm gonna get rid of EXR, type in JPEG, and then come over and type in underscore UD just to match what I exported. Now enter, and you'll see your plate will change. 
Uh, sometimes if you've scrubbed around enough and your plate doesn't update certain frames, save and reopen your file. Your image plane will be fine. And if you happen to have a long sequence, make sure your frame cache is higher than the amount of frames that you have. I only have 150 and I'm a 150, uh, 151 coincidentally, so that's perfect. And if you want your image plane to be further back, or, uh, further back in space, come over into depth and add in a zero or two. Okay, so I don't want to see this plate in our perspective view, so I'm going to go looking through camera. And I want my outliner right now. I'm going to go to Window, Outliner, and I'm going to expand this folder that Synthize gave us, which has our camera, our trackers, and a couple null objects that are kind of placeholders for the objects we made in Synthize. I'm going to middle mouse drag my camera into the viewport I want it to view in. And now I want to bake this camera out into the world space because I did my layout, I did my orientation in Synthize, and I scaled it, and I'm happy with where the camera was sitting. I could just hit shift P and that's it. But if you happen to move this group, scale or rotate or anything, then you can't just shift P this out because it has keyframes and it'll snap back to wherever it was. In this case, you have to bake it. So at track, we have a toolbar, which I have to the side here. Uh, we're not going to go through all of these, but we have stuff like a uh, stabilized camera, a cone creator for the locators, smooth keyframes, which if you're looking in your graph editor and have some jitters, you can smooth that, bake object in or out, that's kind of complicated, won't talk about it. We have camera and object bake, which is what we're going to use to bake this camera out. Uh, let's see, is it worth talking about the other stuff? I don't think so. What is this? Honestly, I haven't used a lot of these. Anyway, the important one is camera and object bake. So again, if you had to do any crazy repositioning of your scene in Maya, you have to bake this out and you can hit this camera bake and hey, it's done. If you don't have this script, you can duplicate your camera, shift P, get it out. Uh, with that selected, control click your old one, come to space, constrain, parent. And now the, ano oh, I did that in the wrong order, sorry. Select your old camera with the animation and then your new one. Spacebar, constrain, parent. And now this one follows your old one. You can hold space, edit, keys, bake simulation. And once you've baked your camera, you can then delete the constraint and then you have a new camera with the animation. Then you'll just have to toss in your image plane. Delete. So for now, I'm just going to bake, delete these objects I don't need, and shift P to get these locators out and call it locators. And I'm going to delete this leftover group and let's rename our camera to shot cam underscore whatever your shot is called underscore the amount of frames in your shot. So 149 frames, 149 FMS, enter. And now I'm just going to click in the blank space, hit control G, we're going to make a set proxies folder. And I'll middle drag it to the middle just to keep things organized. Okay, so if I model anything, I'm going to put it into set proxies. Right now, we want to color these locators so we can see what they are. So now everything's organized. If I model anything, I'm going to dump it into set proxies. Um, because then it'll take on a color of these layers that we're about to create. So if I hit control A a couple times so that we're in channel boxes, you can see the display layers. Now you could do this manually. You could select your camera, hit the fourth button, which will make a layer with the camera included, color code it red, and then call it shot cam or something. Save. And now you can see our color, our camera. Oh, I can't. Oh, dear. Okay, now you can see our camera is colored and organized so that people can hide it and do whatever they need later. But you could do this with a script that track the effects. Um, I don't have my toolbar here, so I'll probably show a screen cap of, uh, of the other track toolbar that we have. But there's a layers button, which I'm going to click on my end. So I'm going to select camera, set proxies, locators, 
and here I have my layers button it just doesn't it just doesn't have a pretty icon to it so click and now you can see it made these brand new layers and I'm gonna delete my old layer I don't need it right click delete alright so if we were to take and put any kind of objects here and drag it up into set proxies hit 4 you could see that the objects are also colored I'm gonna delete that for now and yeah let's just go over here watch our scene perfect if your plate happens to be going slow right now it is caching on the first playback and then it'll go faster and smoother on the next go around so with all that done that is my basic scene setup from synthize to maya and in the next video we are going to actually model this out and get ready for publish